Welcome to my New York travel guide. I will give you an honest view of our experience and some tips for what to see, where to stay and what to eat. We caught an early flight to New York, which I liked because with the East Coast being five hours behind the UK, we landed in the afternoon. My skin usually gets dry when I fly, so I try these eye patches that are all the rage online, but to be fair, I didn't really see the difference. I can't say that Aer Lingus has the most comfortable seats or the most friendly staff, but I ate their food, watched some movies, and we made it safely, and that's all that matters. We landed into JFK Airport, and I loved how easy it is to make your way into the city via public transport. We took the air train into Jamaica Station, and from there we took a connecting subway train into Manhattan. You only need to buy a pass for the air train, but for the subway you will be able to travel using a contactless card. What was confusing for us is that you actually pay for the air train when you get into Jamaica Station, not when you get on at the airport. We stayed at the Hilton Garden Inn in Times Square, an area that I recommend if you want to do touristy activities because it is within walking distance to the main attractions and has good transport links to other areas of the city. We freshened up and went to dinner, having my first walk through Times Square, and it was fun to see street performers and tourists alike having a good time. The excessive advertisement feels a bit dystopian, and due to the crowds and screens everywhere, I felt drunk after the first five minutes. But that is part of the Times Square's charm, and I was there for it. We went to this craft beer place, the Yard House, that advertises more than 130 beers on tap, but I think it's more of a tourist trap, because the taps weren't working and the food was average. I recommend not including breakfast in your hotel package, because there are so many iconic eateries and coffee shops to try. On the first day, we went to the Krispy Kreme flagship store, which was a five minute walk from our hotel, and we went just as they opened, as it was the only way to avoid waiting 15 minutes in line to get in. But there's a reason why people queue. Not only the donuts are fresh, but you get to see how they make it. Being in store was a cool experience, I don't care that you can get their donuts at home. The variety was insane and I tried their pecan cheesecake donuts, which was only available at their New York store and it was delicious. After breakfast, we walked around making our way to 5th Avenue and even attended Mass at the famous Cathedral of St. Paul. We continued our walk on 5th Avenue, which led us to the Plaza Hotel, which costs a cool thousand dollar per night. We went in to see the lobby and have a wander around, because some of our favorite shows, Sopranos and Mad Men, filmed a few episodes here. Central Park is bigger than I expected, but I'm glad that we rented bikes and toured most of it. You only need a bank card and the city app on your phone, and you can return the bike at any of their self-serve stations around the park. Whatever you do, just please don't go on the carriages. 
Although the horses didn't look as bad as the horses I used to see in Romania, it was disappointing to see these animals work all day every day carrying around tourists that would be better off walking. If you can't cycle or walk for long distances, but still want to visit the park, you can go on a bike carriage and one of the cyclists can show you around or rent an electric scooter. We stopped at the John Lennon Memorial and then exited the park and had hot dogs because we were starving and wanted to check this iconic but severely overpriced food item off our list. I think this hot dog though skyrocketed our carbon footprint because the food trucks use diesel and gas generators. Maybe we could have done without this experience. Afterwards, we went to a sports bar to watch football and had some nice craft beers and delicious tacos for dinner. I love the atmosphere in sports bars, despite not really following any sports because everyone is relaxed and having a good time, making them nice places to chill. One thing I love about America is that pretty much any bar will serve a good variety of craft beer, so if you are a fan, New York is the place for you. One thing I wish America learned from the UK is serving half pints. I love high ABV beers and I'm incredibly lightweight and usually can't have more than a third or a half a pint, but bars here operate on a full pint or nothing approach. My mother-in-law sent us a treats hamper and we had loads of delicious cakes and beers for the room throughout our stay. Thanks, mom. In the morning, we discovered my favorite breakfast diner and again, I recommend going early to avoid queuing. They serve traditional food such as waffles and fried chicken, scrambled eggs and everything that counts as a traditional American breakfast. It was fresh and delicious and the staff was helpful and patient. Then we made our way to the American Museum of Natural History. I was obsessed with dinosaurs when I was a child and I am still pretty passionate about these long gone creatures. So I target museums that have dinosaur exhibits and this one was of course at the top of my list and exceeded my expectations. Not only is the museum a beautiful example of the 19th century neo-gothic architecture and has a rich dinosaur exhibit, including the Barosaurus, who greets you as you enter the main hall, but they have many other incredible animal, insect and people exhibitions. Despite the huge breakfast, we were famished after the visit and went to Chipotle, which despite being a chain, it is one of my favorite Mexican takeaway places. I had a burrito bowl, which was so filling that I needed a nap after. The next day, we took the subway to the financial district, which is where the boat to Lady Liberty and Ellis Island begins. I recommend reserving at least half a day on the island, where you can take photos with the statue and visit the Immigration Museum, which was the most heartwarming museum I've ever visited. As a fellow immigrant, it hit close to home, even though my experiences weren't even half as harsh as theirs. Imagine moving to a new country with no money before flights and phones existed, knowing that you will probably never see your family again, only to put up with harsh living conditions, low wages, poor accommodation and discrimination in the hope for a better future for you and your children. I learned so much from the visit and I highly recommend paying a visit. Afterwards, we walked on Wall Street and had an iconic New York pizza. Allegedly, touching the charging bulls balls brings good luck there was a long queue and I wasn't going to wait 15 minutes to touch any pair. We then visited the 9-11 memorial, which was a deeply emotional visit, thinking of those who died in the horrific events in 2001. We then visited Westfields Mall, which has a really cool and futuristic architecture. Even the subway station has beautiful tiling. Our last stop for the day was Chinatown. Before calling it a night, 
We had cocktails near our hotel, a Victorian themed bar called Lily's Victorian Establishment. Heads down to the authentic decor and some of the most delicious old fashioned drinks. On our last morning in New York, we went to Liberty Bagels for breakfast. I highly recommend their food. They have a wild variety of bagels, as well as savory and sweet toppings. My husband had a blueberry bagel with blueberry cheese filling. And I had chicken salad bagel, which was so tasty, I tried to recreate it at home. They have shops all over Manhattan, and we initially went to the one in Midtown, but the area felt unsafe, so we went to Liberty Bagels on 5th Avenue instead and had a much better experience. We finished the morning by having coffees in Central Park and then headed back to the airport. Till next time, New York. Thank you for watching. Let me know your New York City do's and don'ts in